Okay, so next we want to find what that actual difference is between, or the difference in differences. So we want to find the difference between treatment and control before and after, and then find that corner cell of that, that matrix that we saw in the lecture. That's our goal. And so we're going to do this in two different ways. We're going to do it manually, just so you can see how it's done. And then we'll do it with regression, which is a lot easier. Um, so to do it manually, we'll make a, a section here called manual diff in diff. Okay, so for manual diff and diff, if you remember from the lecture, um, let me pull it up here. What we need to do is find four numbers in order to calculate the difference in differences. And those four numbers are the average in the treatment group before, average in treatment group after, and average in control group before, and average after. Um, so ultimately, we will have a table that looks like this here. So we want these four numbers here. So practically speaking, with our the data we have right now, this is going to be before the change, after the change. This is going to be high earners and low earners are there two different groups. So we need to find the average long duration of, of unemployment for each of these groups here. So we're going to do that with um, dplyr because it's fairly easy to get all four of those numbers all at once. Okay, so I'm going to add a new chunk here. We're going to make a new smaller data set here called um, just diffs, because why not? Um, so this is going to be based on our injury data. But we're going to group by a couple columns and then summarize. And then we will get averages for the things that we've grouped. So we're going to say group by, and we want to group by our two categorical columns. We have after 1980, because that's our before and after column, and we have high earn. Okay, so if we group by those two variables, and then we will say summarize. Um, if you want to do that pipe symbol without typing percent greater than percent, um, you can do Command Shift M on Windows or on on a Mac, or Control Shift M on Windows, and it'll do that for you. So we're going to make a new column of summarized data, and we'll call this mean duration. And this is going to be equal to the mean of our log duration column. So if we run this, we will see nothing. Um, and that's because it stored all of that output as a small data set called diffs, which we can see it over here in our environment panel. We can click on it. And now we have our four numbers. So there's our after 1980 and high earn is zero. There's our number. And then after 1980, high earn is one. There's our number. So we, we have our A, B, C, and D numbers there. We just don't see them directly here. If we want to see it in our document, we can run just diffs by itself. So if we run this, it will calculate it. And there's our output there. Neat. So if we wanted to, this is the table that we need to fill out to figure out our diff and diff estimate. This is not um, our code. This is just um, Markdown. Like if you want to make a table in Markdown, this is how you type it with a whole bunch of um, these up and down signs and a whole bunch of spaces. Um, this is how you do tables. Um, if you have the latest RStudio version, the preview version, you can use the visual markdown editor here and make a table that way instead of manually typing it because it's tedious to do that. Um, but now we can fill this out. We can look at this and say what was before 1980 high earners. So we say before 1980 high earners, there's our 1.38. That is right there. And we could actually just say 1.38 and we can fill in all of the values there and figure it out. Um, so that would work. But that's that's kind of tedious to handwrite. And if we ever change any of the data set or like switch to Michigan instead of Kentucky, um, we've now handwritten things and everything will be different. So we don't necessarily want to do that. So what we're gonna do instead is pull these things, pull these numbers out manually using code um, instead of actually typing them here. So to do that, we want to basically extract these numbers from this diffs data set here. So I'm going to copy diffs and put it down here. So to do this, we're going to make a new variable called before treatment so that we can get the number for before treatment. 
Um, so to get this, we're going to pull it out of our diffs data set. Um, so we're going to use that diffs data set, but we're going to filter that data set. So we're going to say filter. We want after 1980 to be zero because we want it to be before. And then we want high earn to be one because that's our treatment. Um, high earn equals zero is our control group. So if I run this now, I now have a tiny data set here that has one observation with three variables. I can click on it and look at it. Um, so all we did is we extracted one of these rows from the diffs data set that has our ABCD numbers. And now we just have that one row here. What we really want is just this one number. We want to extract just that cell. So the last thing we can do here is add one more pipe and we're going to use the pull function which will pull a value out of one of the cells and we want to pull out of the mean duration column so we can say pull mean duration so now if we run it notice how in the environment panel i no longer have a data set called before treatment that's gone but instead i have a value here called before treatment and it's this 1.38209 etc so that's the the full value for the before in the treatment group and we want to get this for everything else so we want an after treatment we want before control and we want after control and so i just copied that same code like four times here and now i just need to adjust it so here's before treatment we can say we'll make this one before control so we'll name it before control and then we just have to change these numbers and so instead of high earn equals one that's high earn equals zero so it's going to be before 1980 high earn equals zero that's our before control and then we want after treatment is going to be after 1980 and high earn equals one because they're our treatment group. And then we want after control. And so there is, um, that's after 1980 and high earn is zero because that's our control group. So now if I run this whole chunk and look at the values here, it is now extracted each of those ABCD things from our summary table here as just standalone numbers, which is neat because now if I just take like before control here, put it in the console and run it, there's that number. There's the 1.12. And if I look at diffs, there's that same number, 1.12. So that worked. Everything's great. Okay, finally, we need to do the actual diff in diff part. Um, where you need to find the differences and then find the differences between the differences. Um, so we have these actual values here that we've run um, by running this chunk here. We have those values. So what we want to do is figure out first the difference between treatment um, before and after within treatment and then before and after within the control group. So to do that we can just say after treatment minus before treatment so that'll give us the difference within the treatment group of before and after the program or the policy change. And we can do the same thing for control. We can say after control minus um, before control. And if we run them, it'll actually show us the numbers. That's great. But we want to store those as something so that we can actually use them um, because we want to find this minus this. Um, so we're going to do the same thing we did here and just store this single number as an object and then we can use it later. So we're going to store this as diff treatment before after. And then we'll call this one diff control before after. So if we run these now, we should have two new variables here called diff treatment before after and diff control before after and if we look at them um, there's our 0.19 and there's our 0.007 so those are um, the differences if we come back to this slide here what we just found was the before we just found b minus a and d minus c that's what those two things are that we just found so the last thing we need to find is b minus a minus d minus c so to do that we can just take um, our treatment minus our control and run it and it's 0.19 that is our causal effect 
So this program, this policy change that happened in 1980 caused an increase in log numbers of weeks of unemployment for high earners of 0.19. Um, that's confusing, thinking about logged weeks um, as 0.19. Um, because it's a log, we can actually think about it with percents. And so what we can say is that the policy change caused an increase of or an increase of 19% in the duration of unemployment for high earners. So it made high earners take longer unemployment, which isn't necessarily bad. Maybe they needed it. Um, maybe they needed more recovery time. I don't know. But that's kind of the causal effect of this program is this 0.19 that comes because of the program itself. Um, and we have that actual number right here, this 0.19, because it's the difference in these differences, and that is our causal effect. Um, if you want to actually see what this looks like, um, the way you can plot this thing is because we we saved these four numbers, it's fairly easy to do this with ggplot. Um, so what we can do is add a new chunk here. We're going to say ggplot. We're going to plot our diffs data set. We're not going to plot the whole injury data set. We're just going to plot this shorter version here, this, this one with the four rows in it. So we're going to say data equals diffs. And then we're going to make our mappings. We're going to put x um, equals after 1980. And y is going to be our mean duration. And then we're going to color this by high earners. So we're going to get both of those variables, the before and after and treatment control in one graph. And then we can say plus geom point so that we get dots. So if we run this, we should get four dots. Okay, so there's our control group. There's our treatment group. Um, the treatment group was higher originally, but then they didn't follow the same trend that the control group did. Um, right now I'm kind of drawing those lines with my cursor here, but we don't have to do it with the cursor. We can do it with a line. So to do that, we can say um, plus geom line. And now if we run it, we should get a goofy looking line. Um, because what it's doing is it's connecting every single point. And so it makes that kind of N shape, which we don't want. So to get around that, what we can do is there's one more aesthetic that we can use that's like fill and color and shape and size and stuff, but it doesn't do anything. It's called group. And what this does is it essentially, instead of drawing a line between every point, it'll draw lines within the groups. But it won't do any colored lines or anything. It'll just make sure the lines stay within the groups. So we can say group equals high earn. And there we go. Now we have our nicer lines between the two points there. So we have almost our diff and diff plot. If we want to see the actual diff and diff, though, the idea behind that 0.19 difference isn't the difference between this dot and this dot. It's the difference between um, what would have happened in the absence of the policy, so a line that's parallel to our control group, to there, that is our causal effect right there. That's the thing we want to highlight. So it would be nice if we could draw a line that goes from here to where it should be, kind of making a parallel trend. Um, so to do that, rather than use a geom layer, because that takes that plots something directly from the data set, um, we don't know what the what the actual like this is not a point in the data set, so we can't get that. So what we can do instead is um, we have a function called annotate, which we'll spell correctly, annotate, which lets you add any geom that you want onto the plot but you just have to specify the x and y coordinates on your own to get that geom to show up. So what we can do is we will add, we'll say geom equals segment. So we're just going to draw a line. Um, so to get this to work, we have to feed it a couple different options. We have to tell it where the segment will start. And we do that with x. So we say x equals 0. That means it'll start down here where x is 0. And then it'll end at another x. So it's going to end, um, we say x end equals 1. So it's going to draw a line from 0 to 1. But then we have to tell it what y values to, to use. So we can say y equals. So the nice thing about this 
this was kind of tedious pulling out these individual values here, the before treatment, before control, after treatment, after control. But because we pulled them out, we can actually use these same numbers, these values that we've stored in this plot here. So we want the, the line to start here at this dot, which is the before um, treatment group dot. So if we come up and say before treatment, let's check it. If we run just before treatment, it should say 1.38. Look at the plot, that looks like 1.38, neat. So we want to, we'll just copy before treatment and we'll say Y is gonna be before treatment. Okay, the last thing we want is whatever point this is out here. Um, so to get that, we already know that this is kind of the diff and diff distance. So if we take this after treatment point and subtract the causal effect, that will tell us where it would have been without the causal effect. So we can say y end equals, so our after treatment number minus, we actually never stored this number here. Um, right here, see how we ran diff treatment before after minus diff control before after, and it just spat out a number. We can save that as a value here, and then we can use it later. So we can say diff underscore diff equals that thing. Um, so now we have a value, if we run it, there's our 0.19, but it's saved as this variable here. So we can come here and say y end equals after treatment minus our diff and diff. So now if we run it, here's what would have happened without the program in our treatment group. And here's what actually did happen. This difference right here is our difference in difference estimation. Um, that black line looks like it belongs to to the actual data here. So one thing we can do is say line type equals dotted. And now we'll have a dotted line because it's different. There we go. Beautiful. So there's our diff and diff line. Um, if we want or our parallel trends line or what would have happened in the counterfactual world. If we want um, to show a line where this causal effect is, we can do the same annotate function. We just change a couple things. So we say annotate, spelling it correctly. So we're gonna say geom equals segment. Here we want the line to go straight up and down right here. So our x is going to be at one, and because it's just going straight up, it's going to end also at one. So we can say x equals one, x end equals one. The y is what we care about. So it's going to start here at this magical hypothetical point, which we already know is after treatment minus diff and diff. So we can say y equals after treatment minus diff and diff. And then our y end we know is after treatment because we're gonna draw that line in between there. So we say after treatment there, run it. We should get an up and down line showing the causal effect, perfect. There's the causal effect. Um, we can color it so it looks fancier. Color equals red. And that is our causal effect. We can do some other data visualization stuff to kind of improve this. Um, instead of having this zero to one scale, we could say after 1980, before, or before 1980, after 1980, kind of clean that up, um, get rid of that legend. You can do other stuff, but that is basically kind of how to visualize diff and diff right there which is kind of magical.